Has anyone been to an open house they just thought, oh my gosh, this is the best open house I've ever been to? I've been doing a lot of open houses. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> Have you ever had an open house that you thought, oh my gosh, that's the best open house I've ever had? Yeah. Like, a lot of traffic. Okay. Uh, Sunday. Old Town? What makes Old Town so unique for open houses? Because the homes are unique. Yeah, yeah. It is kind of like having a home tour. All right. So, what are the top three things that you want to accomplish about or learn about having a successful open house today? What do you What do you want to take away? Driving traffic. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you seriously just move to not sit next to me? That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody sitting next to you. No, he, he just wanted to sit Marshall. next to me, that's all. Thanks, Marshall. What's up? I don't have kids. I like having my back. I like it. What's that? Okay. All right, what else? Not sure yet. Religion. We have driving traffic. What else? Converting any leads. Okay, yes. convert leads. And getting people to be honest with you when they fill in the yes. registration cards. <laughs> okay. Uh, honesty. Are you saying liars are liars? Liars are liars. Are liars. I know. <laughs> okay, what else? Else? I'm gonna say conversion slash honesty. What do you want? What What do you want to take away from today? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to learn about open houses? Um, really, I, I think it really should be lead capture. If you're gonna count that as conversion, okay. So, I mean, you know, it's actually capturing their information because it's not just the time you walk in, nobody asks you to sign in. Yeah. True. Anything else? Maybe just like you know, follow up and and objections once you call it once in a while. Okay. No. <laughs> Not at all. All right, so we're gonna break into three groups again. So uh one group. One group and another group right here. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, um, I'm going to give you. Where? Sorry. Y'all are grouped right here. So you're going to talk to us. Then you guys, and then y'all back there. All right? Yeah, y'all back there. Practicing. Practicing my y'all. All right, so. Or should it be all y'all? All y'all. 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 All you're going to talk about the best ways to drive traffic to an open house. And I want you to write down the top things that you come up with and be prepared to share that with everyone else in the room as soon as four minutes is up. All right? So ready, set, go. Following up with the first one, like they used to be up before, and then the MLS. I think that would be a very low It's very low It's very low It's not a very low It's not a very low Facebook, but then, yeah. the first. I try to do my own. So go after that. Go over the door. This is, is, is how we're using it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Maybe no, there's no, maybe no, like no on there. We should be really have them for the house and they all make their own from the 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 as long as though it has to have plenty of photos so really getting with the lender and then they want you to start taking all of our so they can put their lender information of course there's always a lot of us right so Somebody said a minute ago that balloons were a really good idea for open houses. And the other day I was watching, uh, I was on Facebook, just kind of scrolling through my news feed, and this video popped up of this uh, infant who was probably maybe three, six months old. And this kid was just having a blast because his mom and his dad laid him on his back and tied balloons oh, yeah, to his hands and his feet. He loved it. So anyways, that's uh, completely off topic. But balloons always well, make always for a make good time, happy. even when you're 31 and it pops up on your... Well, the reason why I said that was that you, you're, you're raised from the time you're an infant to associate balloons with a good time or a fun time. Yeah. Right? So we learned this in the bar business is that we, we would come out every party or every weekend with massive balloons and it would just catch people's attention and bring them in. Yeah. Apply the same thing to your own houses. You know, and it helps you stand apart when there's more than one sign at the inter intersection, which, yep. you know, in this market, there always is. Yes. You know, so. And yeah. now the, the new thing is those big, giant... Big blow-up guys. Big, <laughs> big yeah. blow-up guys, or even those big, giant flags. I mean, there's so many the different, game. like, yeah. versions yeah. Well, yeah, that turn this to now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've got a blue, 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 what your biggest takeaways were for having for driving traffic to your open house. So why don't we start with y'all back there? And um, we say social media. Social media. You know okay. every app. When you say social media, what about it? Um, like uh, if there are any groups, yeah, advertising on social media. Any, any groups, you know, neighborhood watches that you could. Get into. And some communities have their own, you know, their own pages. So if you can kind of mm -hmm. do a little research and infiltrate them, some 
however you can. I mean, that's it's a good way to get. I it. like the infiltrate part. Yeah, that's a good word. So it's a covert operation in some of it. It really is, and that that's no lie because uh, a lot of times you have to act like you yeah, you got to you got to slide right door underneath door. the door in order to become part of that group. Yeah. Well, you got to have. You gotta be friends with the moderator. Yeah. And if you're not friends with the moderator, you gotta be find nice. a way to become friends with the moderator. Send that person a message and say, hey, what kind of restaurant do you like? I'd be happy to give you a gift card. Something like that. But yeah, seriously, being covert about it and being strategic about it to find a way the to turnaround. infiltrate that group. Yeah. And look like one of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's when I was still selling real estate, I was part of the, um, the uh, my gosh, which, uh, what's that neighborhood out there? Uh, Paloma Lake. I was part of the Paloma Lake uh, Facebook group. And did I live in Paloma Lake? No, I didn't live in Paloma Lake. They found that out pretty quickly. Um, and they took me out of the group pretty quickly, too. Because um, the lady who runs that group, she actually goes and looks at the tax record to see who's living in the house. She had way too much time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is another realtor, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is her new generation activity. OK, so aside from social media, anything else? We also talked about the balloons. Blue. Something okay. you know to catch their attention. All right. And going hand in hand with multiple signs and arrows, you know, at every corner. All right. All right. This group right here. Door knocking. Yeah, inviting people. Door knocking. Okay. What about door knocking? Inviting the neighbors to the open house in case they were thinking about selling the. We were talking a lot of not just like the day of, but promoting the day and the week before. So, yeah. door knocking that week before, advertising on social media, as they said, even Craigslist, working with a lender to have them also drive traffic and promote it. <laughs> Oh, so we say. Yeah, the flyer, the flyer from the lender was a big right, the flyer from the lender with the uh, partner with the, okay. with the type of loans available for that house. And using that to door knock and promoting that on social media to give a little bit more value. And then also making sure that it's promoted on MLS and all of the affiliated websites, like at least a week before, so people can make plans. Okay. So when you go door knocking, I don't know how, but I just messed up my Sharpie. Um, when you go door knocking, what's the script that you're using? You want me to? You want me to? Yeah, give me your script. All right. Um, hi there, I'm Megan Turnipseed. I just wanted to come by and let you guys know that on Sunday from one to four, we're going to be having an open house here um, at 120 South Cross here at your neighbor's property. I wanted to give you some information about the home and what it has to offer. So in case you have any friends or family that might be looking to move into the area. Um, and then I'd make a little joke, at least the ones that you like enough to tell them, you know, to kind of break, to soften the mood. And then, um, yeah, hopefully you guys can come by if you want to kind of see see the home and make, making a nice joke about the pony that they have in the backyard just because they're neighbors yeah. and they've obviously seen it. Like, just yeah. do something that makes it, you're not just this sterile person. Like, right. Hi, my name is Megan Turnipseed. I'm yeah, like, buy <laughs> something that's, I'm like, clear. If you, you see, <laughs> yeah, like, if you, yeah, if you see, that. like, there's a neighbor that, you know, is, is out there walking around and you're door knocking, don't be, like, awkward and, like, walk around them and, like, avoid them. Like, go to the front yard. <laughs> Which, by the way, I've had plenty of times where people are, like, coming home and there's, like, weird circumstances. Like, you can totally play that off if it's, like, okay, that was super awkward. You hey, just you came home. Your groceries? No, sorry, like, sorry about that. But here, I'm, you know, yeah. saying things like that, but just being really a real person. And, so and you kind honest. of hit on my favorite script just a little bit. So... New new house in the neighborhood just come on the market. I'd go knock on the door and say, "Hey, just want to let you know I'm having an open house this weekend. It's going to be on Sunday from two to four. I'd love for you to come by. And if there's anyone that you really, really wanted to live next to, uh, could you let them know that we're going to be having an open house this weekend? And also, if there's anyone that you don't want to live next to, let me know, and I'll make sure I don't sell it to them. <laughs> and I've seriously, never used that one. That's a good one. They would laugh about that. And you, the, the goal in door knocking is to get them to laugh. Because once you get them to laugh, they've opened up to the fact that, guess what? You're a human. You're just like them. You like to laugh, too. And, and always so come just, up smiling. Yeah. Always be smiling. Because yeah. what you put out is what you're going to get back. And if most people, before they go door knocking, 
even me, with me doing it plenty of times, you still have those fears of rejection. Mm -hmm. So if you go up with that smile and that positivity, you're going to most likely do that. Exactly. All right. What about you guys? I like that um, Jay was saying, you know, go do just any house if you need it to be fresh. So, not more than a week. It needs to be, it needs to be a, a appealing, compelling property. It needs to be new to the market. Mm -hmm. No one's going to show up to open homes that have been there for 20, 30, 45 days. It would be considered a stale property. So, the fresher, the better. Unless you say, I'm going to have free wine and cheese. There you go. <laughs> or there's a, a huge yeah. price reduction or a massive remodel. Those are like the only <laughs> times. So if you're choosing open houses that aren't yours, that's a really if good If you're way. going to choose a house that's been on the market for a while, you need to do something absolutely out of the box that's going to make people really want to come. Free tacos. There you go. Yeah. yeah exactly. oh, sorry, I'm like looking at Dave over here. Sign, sign, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, sign like demos. Talking. If you're if you're not putting at least ten signs, it, it's almost like you're spinning your wheels. I'm sure some of you have had success doing two, three signs, but it was most likely if you you go back and look at it, it was a compelling property. It was fresh in the market. It was something with was low inventory. Uh, so the more signs, the better. Uh, there's groups right now, the mega teams out there are pitching that they're doing 40 and 50 signs per property. They're doing so many signs that all the other realtors in town are ratting them out to the city. So they have to go, now go get sign permits for each single one of them. So you want to be that guy. You want to be getting that, your hand slapped that you're doing so much business that you're frustrating the other realtors in our community. Um, but only by doing so much business, not by actually frustrating them. Um, but yeah, I mean, things like that. Uh, Traffic. Social media is always going to always going to be helpful right now. Think about it. Realtors are the biggest posters there are in the professional uh, uh, world. You know, so there's a hundred thousand realtors, and there's uh, fifty thousand, or, or there's fifty thousand realtors, and there's a hundred thousand real estate agents, right? The fifty thousand realtors outpost the realtors by ten. I'm going to outpost the insurance guys by ten times. So everything you see and everywhere you turn is a real estate ad. So keep that in mind when you're doing these. So I would go more select and not just do ads, but actually do invites. Mm -hmm. yeah. So actually reach out to your sphere and send them an invite. When's the last time you were invited to an open house? <coughs> more than likely never. So do an evite and things like yeah. that. You know, and, and send it out, invite your friends and tell them if you know anybody moving to the area from church. You know, our same scripts, just build it into an evite. Yeah. You know, and get it out. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite words from uh, George W. Bush. Strategery. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Be strategic. So there, there's people in the Keller Williams ecosystem that are only do open houses and, and do them at a high level, but they start when they walk in on Monday planning their open houses, and they plan about four to six of them, and then throughout the week, some of those go under contract, so those fall off. You know, and, and by the time that hits, they do them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that's just their business. So if you don't like to call your sphere, if you don't like to you know work a farm, if you don't, and you just want to work open houses, this lady makes tons of money just doing open houses. So that's more where I'm pulling these ideas from our, our people that have done this at a really, really, really high level of the open houses, higher than I ever would, would dream of doing them. But uh, we're going to start down those paths with these, these ideas. Yeah, so um, along with being strategic, has anyone heard of a star agent before? Okay, I'm going to show you what a star agent is. I'm going all over the place. I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to go 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 here. Uh, these are all different destinations that you've gone to for the day, obviously. Not quite as strategic as you could have been. There have been people who have been really, really successful at dominating neighborhoods in a short amount of time with open houses because they were really strategic about it. What I mean by that is they branded their open house signs. They branded uh, uh, with the signs. They've also got direction, uh, directional arrows on it. They've got their picture on it. They've got their name on it. They've got their contact information on it. And they've chosen a neighborhood specifically so that every single weekend, maybe they have one open house. A lot of times if they really want to be successful in the neighborhood, they'll have two open houses in that weekend. Um, sometimes without ever having any of their own listings, just reaching out to people and saying, hey, would you allow me to hold an open house at your home this weekend? Um, and then getting to the point where they're going to allow other people to hold open houses in the homes that they have listed, but still requesting that that agent use their open house signs. You get all the leads from it, but I'd just like for you to use my signs. Would that be okay with you? Most of the time you're going to say yeah, because you're still going to get some leads from that. I've seen people take over entire neighborhoods in 18 months and have 20%, 20, 25% of the market share 
simply by being really strategic about the open houses that they're doing in finding a neighborhood or a couple of neighborhoods that are close to one another that have a good amount of turnover, buying signs that have all of their contact information, all of their, that's got their picture or their logo that's specific to their branding that is catchy, like what you said when you get to an intersection and you see five open house signs and they all look exactly the same, <laughs> Yet there's one that's a little bit different, which one are you probably going to go and look at first? You're probably going to want to go and look at the one that's a little bit different because it stands out a little bit. Be strategic when you're looking for, or when you're, when you're going to do this. If you're going to farm a neighborhood, do open houses in that neighborhood as well. Because then you're going to get the name recognition um, from the people driving through that neighborhood every single week. And especially on the weekends. There's going to be a lot of people that live there driving through that neighborhood, going to soccer games, going to baseball games, going to the mall, uh, you name it. The whole point is to get them to see your name and your face consistently. Can we touch back on signs in a minute? <clears throat> yeah. I think we should recommend what to do with signs and not what to do. We can, we can uh, talk about that right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, signs. Uh, I've been. We have a we have a coach, and we listen to some guys that do like you know some big time stuff with uh, some stuff in California really competitive market so they've kind of had to stand out but the signs it makes a lot of sense we've all seen signs around here where you see and you've got to squint to look at it i think all of us are kind of pushing 40 in this room so you know our eyes are going a little bit here and there uh so black signs <laughs> a minimum of 40. black signs don't really work colored signs don't really work you, you know, they really want to stand out there's zero reason to put your picture on a sign other than you're really trying to create brand awareness but leave that space for a bigger your, your logo your branding your phone number because they can google a name they can google a phone number they can't google a face so that's wasted space mm -hmm. on there so especially your face <laughs> <laughs> you like your faces. so I, I, I think the better uh, and then then it comes down to open house signs are expensive so most people don't want to want to do it and they, they walk around the office who can I borrow from who can I borrow from make the investment there's ways out there to get 99 signs for a hundred bucks if you just search the internet you know the the, the little uh, uh, metal things what are they called? Stakes. 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 Little metal stakes. I mean, those are going to be an extra cost. So you're looking at about 200, 250. You have about 100 signs you can go and think of them as just their disposal. <coughs> I mean, you basically going to throw them away because you're going to put them in places where neighbors are going to take them. We have neighbors take them all the time, or, or people in the community that don't want them there think they trash up the place. Uh, you're going to violate the city. You know, you're not going to be the city. Just likes to go by and take things, especially if you're working in Georgetown. If you don't have the uh, the stuff in Round Rock. The permit, uh, the permits. Which do you ever do you ever buy bulk permits and keep them up front like Round Rock does? I think we have, I think we have some. Money. Okay, um, you know just just kind of things like that. But there's cheap ways to do it. But you can't look at it as an expense because people won't pay twenty, thirty dollars for open house signs. But if you get one lead and that turns into a sale, I mean that's a four, five, six thousand dollar commission that you spent two hundred bucks on. So spend the money on signs. Don't wait till the last minute and start shopping for signs around here or going to the bullpen back there and taking other people's signs or whatever else so um, and then all of a sudden you have you know I mean I think one time we had one of Casey Jorgensen signs up <laughs> just because it was in the mix of the stuff yeah, yeah. so <laughs> all right so let's go to the next one uh, conversion slash lead capture take four minutes talk about the conversion process and the lead capture process that you're using your open houses or that you've heard of that's working really well at other open houses ready go set a timer for four minutes I have a I have a I have a I have a survey. 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 I have a uh, I'm good, I'm good. So, I mean, number one, we got three to more stuff. We'll put them in after that. I'll show you how that was. Oh, yeah, the seller is actually, it's a seller occupied, so the seller's asking everybody signs in. It's the same. I'm sure it's a good idea. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Okay.
<laughs> you can and have so that you brand it with your own which, which you know, even mean, one of my guys I used to yeah. use yeah. that all the time. He would sit there and dial a phone number and call it. But it's just like a sign when she had a conversation with my call of a phone number. And just kind of say, you do that wrong? There you go. That's right. Every single time. Simply asking that yes and no question. And you're just trying to get a sheet. Some people who might be talking with somebody and not sign in the moment. We don't know those differences. So it feels like you have to have those conversations and make those connections. Do you have a question? I'm just listening to what they're saying. Are you currently working on it? You'll be all work over here. So we're going to work over here. We'll be all work over here. Well, here's one of the big things. I think you guys need to do this here. You fill out a fake one. The very first one, and you fill it out completely. We believe it. So we have generated versions of it. So um, people good. feel like, the things that team and I well, I have guess I'm going to fill in this. Yeah. I remember him saying it once before. It doesn't have to be in and there's no right way to get him to do it. I thought it was excessive. So you were going to He could go ahead and sign it later. And I also have a sign of the You're giving me something you want to do. Okay, so if they said that they are working with an agent, but they have not signed anything, I I think I'm going to ask if I can answer any more questions. <laughs> I asked him, are you working with an agent? What's his name? And so once you say their name, if they start or stand or I don't remember, once they probably don't have one, or they just started kind of working with them, and they know their name right off the bat. Yeah, they're like, okay, they're pretty in detail. Then you don't touch them at all. It's not really what you're looking for. I've had more success with them now, but I see them. So I show it to these people. What's their name? Yeah, and I haven't said what she's doing. You don't have to ask. <laughs> like, hey, are you sure you work with them? I want to make sure I bring them and work with them in case you guys are doing it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to do it. Cool. You just live in the area. Yeah. 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 Y
I mean, I follow up the following morning unless First there's something thing. really, yeah. yeah. In that case, talking about having 17 people through, you got to take notes on all those assignment sheets. I, I've done four open houses and I'm just now catching on to that. Yeah, like, shoot, last week and we are, one of the ones I we I couldn't remember Jack on? from Jill. Or yeah, it's too else. much when you, when you have a good property and you're doing it well. So you need to make sure you're having those conversations and you're taking notes on the back of that little form after they leave, you know, as much as you can to so that you know what's going on well, when you follow up and we're talking really about that that huge question are you working with an agent mm -hmm. and what that question what those implications are and how you truly follow up with those those answers that they may give you I mean, can you say something yes. too easy to say yeah. yes or that no. was what we were saying that's the next follow-up mm -hmm. question you got to ask who and saying just and so that we can stumble. follow up with your agent and things like that and if they like what Marshall was saying, if they stutter, they can't come up with something. Who's really, the, Bob? Who's the lucky agent that gets to work with you guys? Right? <laughs> something like that. Well, and I would ask who's, if you're working with an agent, I would ask if you've hired an agent. Oh, that's a great oh, That's a great I've talked to a lot of agents, huh. but that's they haven't amazing. actually hired somebody yet. It's just the same thing like we talked about before. When you walk into Best Buy, your whole intention that day is you're going to buy a TV. You're not leaving the store to buy a TV. Somebody walks up to you and says, can I help you? Most of the time you say, oh, I'm good. No. <laughs> True. Well, and just a little funny little thing here is this house has a pond in the front and a pool in the back. And parents going one way and kids, you know, in the whole They're thing, I'm, fine, and I go, I'm like going, oh, my gosh, she's about to, you know, whose kid is she? You know, I felt like I was babysitting more than <laughs> thing, so. All right. This group right here. Dave has this great thing where he doesn't shake their hand, he hands them the pen. And then to get them to sign <laughs> in. Oh, and I thought that was oh good. that's awesome. So I don't, yeah, don't shake their hand, uh, give them the pen ready to fill out. Have the, the sign right there, I meet them, I bring them to me. You know, I stand by it, and I have a flyer here, basically, and I hand them the pen. And I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I want information from them, and then at the end I'm going to give them information. So. It's just something you got to give to get, right? So, and if so you're if it. you're that talker like I am, and I start having those conversations and asking those questions, sometimes it's hard to get them over there to sign in for that. So that's a huge. That's that's good. Yeah, I think you're right. right. We're and, higher, and then that that's like huge. Big for me too. Yeah. Okay. We're, we we didn't get to bring this up because we only had four minutes. But uh, <laughs> going off, uh, you know, like, like partnering with somebody and not another agent, you know, partnering with a lender, which I think we brought up earlier, but that can be really your door guy. And that can yeah. really, he can, he can answer all those tough questions when you're walking in and direct them to you where? In the kitchen where everybody usually Keep circulates everybody back in to. Control when, yeah. Don't shake right. hands and don't accidentally shake them. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> but I mean, it, I mean, 68% of the time it works every time. So. <laughs> For those of you who don't know the Anchorman, that is a direct quote nowhere. from Anchorman. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dear Lord. All right, we're really going to wrap it up now. All right, how about back there? Um, What'd you get? I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, she was uh, like, you know, just telling them when you meet, greet them, get their information. We're having a gift card drawing, you know. Okay. Sign a way in. to, yeah, sign in, give me your contact That's information so I can get back with you. Um, also, Sue had mentioned um, like getting their email so you can email them the flyer immediately. She said usually they have their their devices, their phones, where they can access the email and the flyer, you know, from that. Good. Okay. So, so, you uh, <laughs> so as soon as you get the email, you've got your phone or you've got the flyers saved and you're emailing it to them. All right. I want to. You're saying. Mm -hmm. I want to add one other thing to that. I really like that idea. I want to go one step further though. How many of you guys have a fake email where you send all your spam to? Okay, well, I guess I'm a minority. Scott Toller. Mine is scotttoller at gmail.com. You send it to me there, I'm probably never going to see it because I think if I look at my email, I've got like 6,000 right now. Get their phone number. So here's how you do it. Hi, I'm Scott. Dave. Thanks for coming to the open house today. Hey, we're not doing um, we're not doing uh, uh, print flyers anymore. We're doing digital flyers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to text you the flyer real quick. Um, what's your uh, phone number? Mm -hmm. And you just text them the link to the flyer, and you get the link from your KW webpage, so that you've already pushed them to your webpage, and you just send them the link for that webpage. Because you can already look up that house on your um, uh, Playster webpage, mm -hmm. and when you do that. 
Now you know that you've got their phone number, and if it comes back and there's a little red icon next to it that says message didn't send, you know they're lying. But you're not going yeah. But you're not gonna say, hey, I think you're lying to me. You're gonna say, it looks like it didn't go through, maybe I got the number wrong. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna correct you and give you the right number. Oh, I gave you my wife's phone. Well, all the fake yeah. people that we call, you know, getting all these. Exactly. Well, we, we used to so call why, right why, spot. So you don't ask for the phone number first, you ask for, hi, I'm Scott, how are you doing? Right. And you, you gave me your name right. the first time. So right. yeah, Dave gave me his name, now I know his name. So when I go to my phone and I type in that number, then I can add him as a contact. And most of the time, if you with a phone number, you'd be amazed at the things that you can do with it. You can take that phone number, search it on Facebook right now, and see their profile if they have a Facebook profile and they've connected their phone to it. If it's the right number. If it's if it's the right number, exactly. <laughs> if it's the wrong number. That's the thing. Bob and Tulsa are getting all these flyer <laughs> listings. <laughs> exactly. What's going on? Yeah, you just so the day before you're going to go do the open house, look up that link on your phone, save it in your. Um, Save it in Look like your notes Facebook. or something. Yeah. Well, on your on your Keller Williams webpage. Oh, okay. Have we figured out how to have two MLSs on there? I don't believe so. I don't I don't know for sure. I haven't I haven't gotten back with Bruce. Oh, oh that's back. a really good idea. Okay, so back to that. <laughs> Sorry. Search for that link beforehand. If you if you're a member of two different MLSs, what I would do then is I would just get that link from the uh, whatever MLS you are that takes them back to your specific like landing page within the MLS that has your and share that one yeah. with them. Yeah. But the reason you're going to do that is because then you know that you have the right phone number and you know that they're getting it because they're standing right there in front of you. And most people, if you're going to text them something right there on the spot, they're not going to lie to you about their phone number. So you've got their name, you've got their phone number, and with that phone number you can search for all the other vital information that you need in order to add them to your database and start sending them things. Once you've done that, do an eight by eight with that person. Reach out to them every week for eight weeks in some way, shape, or form to let them know that you still exist. So eight by eight is reaching out once a week for eight weeks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that eight, that eight by eight is just to solidify the, is to solidify the relationship that you built with them in the 10 minutes you spent with them in an open house. And then once you finish the eight by eight, you put them into the 33 touch. But by doing what I just said, you're guaranteeing you get an accurate phone number. Yeah, that was good. That's good. Okay. And just on top of that, we, we've actually done that too, is we will read the phone number, dial it right there, and just hit send and call them. And if their phone rings, like, okay, I got your number, good. And if not, say, I, I must have missed something. Is that a three or a two? You know, and, and some people aren't. I wasn't willing to do that at first. But the guy I was with who had been in the business for 20 years is like, you got to. You know, I mean, this is your time that you're on, and they're coming to see you on your time, and you need to capture their information. So, you know, it's, it's kind of yeah. became a thing. So, And, like, if you're going to do the gift card, like, if you're going to do a gift card type thing, that would be, like, make sure that the number's right. Make sure that you have valid contact information and everything like that. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. So, follow-up. Yeah. Talk to me about, or uh, well, take four minutes to talk about the best ways to follow up yes. with one another, or with the people you met after the open house. Ready? Go. Go. So, you number know. four minutes. I'll put email on you. Oh, this is probably a good service. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like from that. Yeah. So, I've been like, send them a postcard at the end of the address right away, the day that you leave the open house. So, I guess so. Write them a postcard for coming to your open house. And you said, right at right, 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 before you leave the house, for your downtime, for your average house. So you're getting it in the mailbox immediately. So they get that the next day and the day after. Thank you. It'll be like Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday Monday. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 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 Yeah. Thank you for coming. 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 Yeah. Thank you
Yeah, you call him a couple days people. later. Hey, did you get my card? It was great seeing you at the open house. Okay. 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 Any questions you may have thought of? Yeah. And then you're saying put them in the lead bank and put them in our database. Database. And then do a database. And then do a database. But so you don't want to know what you're doing. To be honest, it's always swapping for me. It's always the best. And then it's OT. I just called them on my phone. You know, call them. Yeah, they're good. 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 They're good
email them, whether, you know, email, Facebook, uh, texting, calling, <clears throat> whatever it is, um, just to be mindful of what you talked about and that common ground that you found, what they did, didn't like in the house, whether you can um, show them another property that you're like, hey, well, I, thought, I did see this. I don't know what you think, you know. Come from contribution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Boom. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure, like, take notes. Keep a journal with you or something mm -hmm. like that at your open houses that's just for you, not mm -hmm. for them to fill out. And you write notes about them. Mm -hmm. Like, they like this. They mm -hmm. didn't like this. Or they had a kid that fell in the pond in the front yard. <laughs> um, <laughs> super great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was just calling. Is, is your Wait, kid okay? Or or maybe that would be something that you would have fun with and send them a yeah. towel in the mail or something or like fun. that. Yeah. That's yeah. monogrammed yeah. with yeah. their kid's yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. You made a lasting impression <laughs> on me. Yeah. Um, oh, did one lady fail? What's that? One lady fail? Kind of the so oh. maybe you get a little hot wheel with an ambulance. No, I'm just kidding. No, don't, do, don't do that. Uh, but seriously, little like the Brian Buffini method would say, find something that you can have a common ground with them and make a memory out of it. Okay, that's good. And send them something or or do something that's going to get them to remember who you are based upon that that memory that you guys form together. Okay. That could be for many. <clears throat> like we take, no I take notes, but like you know, uh, sleeve tattoo, you know, was wearing mm -hmm. a LA Dodgers hat, you know, was wearing an Astros hat, you know, blah blah blah. So I'll take those notes because that helps <clears throat> me remember those people, yep. and then hit common ground if I do talk to them again, like how how the Dodgers doing right now, you know, and then boom, we're on common ground, and now he gets to. You know, speak about himself. Or you find out why I was really really wearing the hat. I hate the Dodgers. My mother-in-law gave me that hat and she was going with us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you learn the real story after when you follow up. So. Right, right, right. All right, so, how about you guys? <clears throat> uh, it was really just Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Marshall's, Marshall's given us some good input of, of mm -hmm. sending, a, sending a card right away. Yeah, we, do, we do thank you cards for any touch we, we do. Um, I would encourage you to do that for even door option. knocking. That's Anytime it. anyone ever opens the door for you, they're giving you time out of their life. Thank them for it. Look them up in the tax even record. In the, in the door even in the door knocking. Yeah, Everybody the door knocking you come in contact with. Really yep. um, giving a call and an email to follow up. Um, and then, then add them to your database. Yeah, and you're, you're going to do an, yeah, the 8x8 or 33 touch based on the situation. Most of the time you should be doing an 8x8 if they showed any interest. If you're going to spend four hours of your life in a house, you better get paid for it. Yes. Find, be purposeful about it. And I, I've shared this story before. When Kendall and I first moved here from California, we went to like every open house under the sun because we didn't have anything to do on the weekend. Um, and it was we weren't going to be buying for a year. But not <laughs> one agent ever followed up with us. Oh, wow. Really? Not one. Really? Seriously. Hmm. Well, I was saying that, that that's been, for whatever reason, it's just now sinking in that, hey, Joy, that's just. I mean, I don't know why. They can be out there going to every single open house in that neighborhood that week. Mm -hmm. Most of those people aren't going to follow up with them. It's and even if they do, they give up after the first Why do you think that is? Yes, yes. that's where I've been, I guess. Not long. People want instant gratification. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to buy something for me to, from me today, mm -hmm. I'm probably just going to forget about you and move on to the next person who's going to be willing to do about it. It's oh, not yes. the short game in this business. It is the long game. You have to be willing to do it over and over and over again. And be very strategic about it. Minimum it's not, six times. Yeah, a minimum six times. It's not what you do occasionally that makes a difference. It's what you do every single day that makes the difference. And those neighbors coming in could be your next clients. They're interviewing <coughs> you, they're seeing how you're marketing their neighbor's mm -hmm. property, right. and they can be recommending you as well. So don't yeah. just ignore them because they're just a neighbor. Right. Exactly. Those nosy neighbors who end up having a sign three days later from someone else. So, yeah. All right. Anything else anyone wants to add about open houses? 
Marshall had another good idea yeah, what's up, about Marshall? having extra listings of different properties so that are similar. Yeah, that's that's a good in idea. In case they were like this on that uh, that house. Yeah. What? Yeah. Find other houses in the neighborhood that you know are vacant that you can take yeah, them to and show them to buy that house. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share on that. I'm, tr I'm contributing a lot to this one. Um, <laughs> We, we would do a, a binder that would say, I came up with a graphic on it, it, put, it was a house on fire, it said hot properties. And I would do all the properties that were in the neighborhood that were really kind of associated with that. So if we were in Terra Vista, there's always about 75 to about 105 properties for sale in Terra Vista. Yeah. So pull the ones that are the immediate range of that same house you're holding. And then that's where it's, it's good on where you can do the uh, uh, partnering with, you were to do it with another agent, was that that agent can leave with people. And then really you just enter an agreement that you would split those kind of commissions and things like that. But that one got a lot of traction when we were doing that. Was it had my it was branded with the team name, put the hot house thing on there, blah blah blah, and then people could rip through that. And if it wasn't for them, oh it's not for me, it's this, it's like, oh okay, great, I have this book real quick, and then you give them that. Now you can be on to the next client that's actually there and the next person, you know, welcome to that open house. So that's what we did a lot. Oh, you you actually gave them. No, they got to stay there and read they it. Read it. Oh, it was, oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was compelling because I would do the I'd print the prints with the pictures on them so they could kind of see them and then. We have you know. our iPad set up with all of that. So okay. Because we emailed this to you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we would highlight. I would go through and highlight all the attributes of the house too. Was it a four bedroom, three bath? You know, uh, and then the showing instructions on it. Certainly. You know, things like that. We would have we would have notated whether it was a go, if it was a call. We want to see this one. We want to see it now. Well. It says hour notice, so I'd at least need an hour to do it. My open house is at four o'clock. How about I book it for four thirty? Yeah. Okay. And then, with when you have their phone number as well, while you're sitting there at the open house and they're in the house, send them the link to the property that takes them to your web page. Mm -hmm. I would I would also go to your KW mobile app and share that with them. And all you gotta do is put their phone number in and share the app directly to them. As soon as they download it, it's going to brand it specifically to you. Okay. So. They've got that, and then they can search for other properties in the neighborhood as well. Okay. Thank you. Before we are we about to end this? Yeah. All right. So I've been listening to this guy named Greg Greg Twiddle, some Twiddle from Australia. He's one of the biggest real estate coaches there is uh, in Australia. He's actually an agent to like Arnold Schwarzenegger and a few other you know celebrities out there. Uh, it's it's the way they do open houses in uh, Australia that a lot of people are starting to do here uh, on his advice which blows everybody's mind because once I say it, you're going to think it's, it's idiotic almost. And um, He kind of looks at that as like, I can't believe American agents are still doing it this way. But what he has his people doing is multiple open houses on a weekend for 30 minutes, that's it. So 30 minute open houses, you plan in at 1 o'clock, you're out of there about 1.30, you're on to the next open house. Equate for about a 10 to 15 minute drive time between. Go live right when you walk in for that, that first, uh, you know, first five minutes of the open house. Get people there, you're out of there in 30 minutes. You can do multiple open houses in a day. So he's saying that most of his agents in Australia are pulling uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 open houses in, in, a, in a weekend. And the American guys that are trying it are doing four or five and just kind of like, oh, I'm pooped. You know, but it's just, you know. They, Come on, mate. These guys are, they're, they are exhausted. Their, their GCIs are at $1 million, you know, for single agents and, and what they're doing. So they're trying this new system. So we're going to try it because uh, I think we could try anything because there's nothing more boring than sitting in an open house for three hours, you know, and just wanting to really just go. Dang. Come onto the roof and then jump off of it. Damn. I just think things that the culture the culture's changing, culture's always evolving, real estate's evolving. Why not try something new? Because if you're sitting in for three hours and you're not gonna get anybody in, maybe you need to compress that. Maybe that separates the buyers from the, the looky loos, you know, which you really want to do. So those people would be on time. So you would market the open house just like that. But 30 minutes, that's gonna actually get them to think a little bit more as well as like 30 minute open house, that has to be a print. That drives a phone call to you. You know, it's like, does this say 30 minutes? Yeah, it does say 30 minutes. You're doing a 30 minute open house. Yeah. Most of the agents around here, especially in this market of Georgetown, are going to think you're absolutely insane for doing that. But we're going to just have fun with it and do it. I have fun doing your signs. What's that? Like, yeah, I mean, you have to have people doing your signs. Yeah, while you're like, you it. Right, right, right. And there's a cost to it. And there, there's a ton of different ideas that I was getting from these guys. And, mm -hmm. and there's there's happy hour open houses, which we've seen with these guys. Doing it. 50 signs are doing an actual happy hour. They're inviting every single neighbor to it. You know, the neighbors are cool with them having basically the whole neighborhood in their house, you know, from 6 to 7.30 or whatever it is. And there's always an after party afterwards. 
they're pairing a lot with uh, um, exotic car companies, Tesla, Porsche, whoever else to come out and do an exhibit at the house and give rides in the, uh, in the Teslas, uh, in the Maseratis, things like that. They're doing giveaways for branded things. They're doing multiple, the, the, guy, the other guys that are doing four or five open houses in the weekend are doing multiple open houses where they're giving away a ticket. And if you go to more than two open houses, it enters you in one of those drawings to win a branded Yeti cup or a cooler or whatever else. So there's a cost associated with doing all these things. However, you're, you're, there to, you're there to get clients, right? You're there to win. You're there to you know, bring on more business, right? We, we all have to spend money to make money. Yeah. Um, and whether it's minimal of a $70 investment every weekend and it brings me a $7,000 commission, I'm going to be more likely to try that versus sit in an open house for three hours and just really, I'd rather watch paint dry. You know, so. Some open houses, you are still doing that. Um. And I'll send anybody the links that want it. You know, just, just send me your email or whatever, and I'll send you the links on this stuff. And watch these guys, because they're doing the things that it's just not being tried in our market. They're having to get creative because... You know they're they're in a, they're in San Diego where there's less inventory than there is here. You know yeah. and it's all seven hundred thousand dollar inventory. You know and there, there's just these guys that are coming in that guys and gals people that are uh, outworking them by just coming up with these crazy ideas that traditional realtors are bad and just like it will never work and it's working and they're outselling those traditional realtors. I think we should do a market center caravan thirty minutes. You know different agents can host it for thirty minutes on a on a weekend. And just paint the town everybody red. everybody kind of cool. last all of your <laughs> we, we, we talked about that before was putting it all together it was a massive collective yeah. of kw yeah uh, but that's another uh, way of United doing World. it yeah. kw yeah kw Actually, things where it's just of, a tour and basically there's a band yeah. leader we're all meeting at the big office and we're going to have tacos and queso and invite all these people there and caravan out a lender would be happy to pay for a bus mm -hmm. yeah. you know and you could do it once a month and the thing is, is you, you invite your clients that's where that stickiness of like, yeah. whose lead is it you know, it's like, you know, does it, is it my lead, is it your lead, or is it, you know, whose lead is it? That's why we do all these things. So once we worked that out, we did the wristbands. That was a great idea from Kim. We're doing that actually with our queso cook-off is yeah. doing wristbands. Um, but, yeah, putting these ideas and then start making them work and getting a, a, this group of, you know, agents in here and start brainstorming, these things will work.